Okay, Scott, ready when you are. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Scott Rogowski. I'm the director of the uh, Northern California SBDC, Small Business Development Center Finance Center. Um, this is our small business town hall meeting that we have every Monday, Wednesday, and uh, this is our 56th session. And uh, thank you for joining us today on Monday, August 31st. Uh, this is brought to you by Northern California, SBC, the Finance Center, and we have some uh, great uh, guests today. Uh, we are all in this together, and um, I'm, I'm very surprised that tomorrow is September. Uh, it's pretty nutty. So Northern California, SBDC, we are, um, SBDC is a national program or a national federal grantee program. They're uh, funded by the SBA, Small Business Administration. Uh, this is our 40th year, um, which is really awesome. We've been around about over 40 years. Um, and uh, for the city of California, we are funded by SBA. We're also funded by the uh, uh, um, Governor's Office of Economic Development, which is called GoBiz. Because of this funding, we come to you, uh, small business owners, whether you're starting or growing or selling or buying, um, at no cost. Um, and we also offer these webinars and workshops and panels and also uh, educational events, also at no cost. Um, the Finance Center, we're a, a group uh, or a team. Um, for Northern California SBDC, we cover the most 36 northern uh, counties in the state. Uh, we go from the Oregon border down the coast to Santa Cruz. We cover all nine counties in the Bay Area. We go southeast to Stockton, then back up to the Nevada and the Oregon border. Uh, so a very large territory, lots of rural areas. Um, for the Finance Center, we specialize in nothing but helping businesses access capital, whether you want to start, grow, uh, buy some equipment, buy a building, buy a business, um, expand, um, or potentially sell your business and then you know um, do some succession planning. We're here for you at no cost. Uh, we specialize in helping you put together all your financials, kind of put together your projections, P&L, balance sheet, uh, tax returns, personal financial statement, and kind of craft the best story to uh, present to a lender so that you can get the capital that you need. We do this at no cost. Again, um, I'm the director, Scott Rogowski, and then we also have uh, Sunita Maharaj. You see her on the calls as well all the time. She's the associate director, and um, we're here together today. All right, so a quick agenda. We have a disclaimer, uh, which is our favorite thing to read. It's actually my favorite, non-favorite thing to read. We have <laughs> idle and PPP uh, parameters, a little chart. Forgiveness documents, like just a quick overview of it, like what link to go to and, and that great stuff. We, uh, we're not going to go into any updates. In addition to that, because we nothing has changed over about the last month, and um, we, uh, we have an industry panel that we'd love to get to, um, and since they are a highlight of today's uh, event. So then we have an SBA update. Uh, we have uh, Carrie Ellenwood. She's an interim deputy director for the Sacramento District Office in uh, Citrus Heights, so she's going to give us an update. And then uh, we also have uh, David Castaneda, also from her team, um, same office. Then we have a... a we have a panel today, an industry expert panel across four different industries. We're very excited to have them today, and um, they are going to talk and introduce themselves. So we have um, upcoming webinars, which uh, Alan will go over uh, towards the end, and then a Q&A. So disclaimer, uh, things are changing all the time, and uh, this information was correct when we put it together, but things are changing all the time. Um, the, the PPP, which is a Paycheck Protection Program, uh, the, the second tranche closed as of uh, August 8th, so it's almost been a whole month, pretty crazy, but three weeks. Uh, the IDLE, which is Economic Injury Disaster Loan, uh, it's opened back up for all types of businesses, agriculture, sole crops, any types of businesses, including 501c3, which is usually a contribution, like a donation, uh, nonprofit, 501c4, usually an educational nonprofit, and 501c6, which is usually a membership-based nonprofit similar to like a chamber. Um, all that, all those 501c3s are open as well as all types of businesses. The idle advance is no longer available. So you no longer get an idle advance. And if you were in the queue to get one and then you haven't gotten one, then you are not gonna get one. And we apologize for that, but SBA uh, dispersed all their $20 billion worth of funds that were allocated for that. So there is no more idle advance. Please do not hesitate for the idle to apply for the idle, regardless of what you hear in the news or what your CPA says, your mom, dad, your business partner, whoever you hear it from, 
please do not hesitate to apply. We don't know if you're gonna get approved unless you apply, and we don't know if you even qualify unless you apply, so please apply. Um, until further notice, the idle is still available. So real quick parameters, um, we still get, still get a lot of questions around what can you use the money for. I know we're gonna continue to get a lot of questions around forgiveness as the year progresses and we get into 2021. Um, we're still at the infancy stages of the forgiveness, but for the rate for the idle is 2.75% for all for profits, 3.75% for all nonprofits. PVP is 1% for everyone. It's a 30 year loan for the idle. It's uh, anywhere between two and five years for triple P, depending on when you were funded. If you're funded before June 5th, you were given two years. If you're funded after June 5th, you were given five years. If you're funded before June 5th, and you receive two years, you can go back to the lender and negotiate to get to the five years, which is exciting. I know that sounds really exciting. We can help you with that if you need some help. Payment deferrals, 11 months. Uh, interest does accrue, but 11 months, you don't have to make a payment for idle. PVP, it's 10 months after your chosen cover period. So if you choose eight weeks, it's 10 months after that. If you choose 24 weeks, it's 10 months after that. Um, so uh, what that should mean to you is you don't have to make a payment until next year for both of these loans, which is pretty amazing. Collateral or personal guarantee. If you receive a loan over $25,000 for IDLE, you are um, asked to uh, provide some sort of collateral if you have it. If you don't have it, don't worry. It doesn't hinder your ability to uh, get the money. Uh, the guarantee is, personal guarantee is only required over $200,000. On the PVP, there is no personal guarantee and there is no collateral required. Idle, there's no forgivability of the idle. There's no forgivability. You cannot get it forgiven. It's a 30 year loan at 3.75% for four profits. Um, you could potentially get up to 100% forgiven on the PPP. Um, if you jump below that, if uh, on the uh, um, allowable uh, spending uh, for the money, if, you're, if you spend 60% or more on payroll costs, uh, including state taxes, uh, and 40% or less on utilities, mortgage, interest, monthly payments, or rent, then it could be potentially 100% uh, forgiven. The, so that's what all you can spend the money on the PPP for it to be forgiven. The idle, uh, you can use it on all operating expenses, cost of goods, interest debt payments. Um, you can't, uh, what's not allowed to do is you're not allowed to use idle for any expansion, which is like buying a car or remodeling your storefront. Uh, no equipment, um, you can't pay off full amounts of loans or paying off any tax liens. Um, for idle, for PVP, um, you can't use it for workman's comp, you can't use it for federal taxes, you can't use it for anything that's part of, not, not part of the four uses, excuse me, which is um, a funny acronym called RUPI. It's rent, utilities, payroll costs, and interest mortgage payments. Um, so yeah, you can use a PVP on all the other stuff that you want to use it for, but it will not be forgiven. So, uh, all right. So this is the only slide that we're going to have uh, on the PPP forgiveness or the calculations, where to go, how to access it, all the great stuff. Um, Sunita is at answering questions as I speak and as the panelists speak, we'll be answering questions. If you have any regarding forgiveness, PPP or idle, uh, we're receiving a ton of questions right now. We're making cold calls, we're talking to existing clients, we're sending out surveys, we're finding out that a lot of business owners do not know, still do not know about the idol and what it is and where it's coming from and how much it is and why it can save their business. We're still finding out a lot about idol, more than we are about PPP because PPP is gone and exhausted and then now we're into forgiveness, which is a whole different set of problems that we have. But here's some information regarding that. Um, and then now we are going to SBA support. After SBA support, then we will get into our updates. We'll get into the panelists. Uh, so we have Carrie Ellenwood, interim deputy director from the Sacramento office in Citrus Heights. So I'll throw it over to Carrie. Thank you, Scott. Good to be here with everyone today. Um, I'm not having any new numbers on the Paycheck Protection Program. And on the idle program, the last numbers I had are from late August, which are 3,497,000 loans for 184 billion dollars. And California is the state that's received the most loans with 533,000 loans 
for $33 billion. So those programs are up and running for the EIDL loans for COVID-19. We also have a new disaster declaration in California for a drought that is occurring from July 21st through now. And those are in Modoc County and contiguous counties of Lassen, Shasta, and Siskiyou, Nevada counties of Washoe, and the contiguous Oregon counties of Klamath and Lake. If you are affected by that and want to apply for those economic injury disaster loans, you need to apply through a different portal than the COVID-19 portal. You would apply through disaster loan assistance dot sba dot gov and i will go ahead and send that notice out to alan and scott and sunita and we can share that um, for you there in addition scott has your slide up here with the sba loan support if you have a loan that was made after march 27th and before september 27th you have a loan that gets funded sba is going to make your loan payments for six months including principal and interest for all 7a 504 and micro loans we do have a lot of people working with us on those disaster economic injury loans and if you have questions on those you can call 1-800-659-2955 there can be delays in the response time on that due to the number of small businesses that are reaching out to sba i've seen a few questions asking about idle documents and reconsideration that is an option for you you need to email pdcrecons at sba.gov you can see that there on the screen and they will be able to assist you with those types of questions. Scott, that's all I have for today. Awesome, thank you very much, Carrie. Did uh, David Castaneda want to speak a little bit or? Yes, I'll keep it short, thank you, Scott. Um, again, the SBDC is one of the largest uh, programs the SBA has for consulting and webinar training services, but I'd like to, again, remind people of our other resources that also supplement uh, the um, consulting and training. So on September 1st, the Sacramento Women's Business Center has a debt management uh, value of using debt management strategies to help your business. So that's one September. Also our Women's Business Center in Mount Shasta on 12 September, uh, they have a webinar and build an effective website for your business. So the Women's Business Center again, um, they do have free consulting and uh, webinars that they have available. Uh, SCORE, that's another one of our programs. Those are uh, volunteer mentors that help uh, business owners and entrepreneurs. On 17 September, they have overcoming uh, cybersecurity challenges. They have two experts that give their high level recommendations on cybercrime defense. Uh, so those are upcoming. Uh, again, these are resources that the SBA provides uh, to help entrepreneurs and small businesses do better in the business. I'll put those links on the chat box. Thank you, Scott. Awesome, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, thank you, David, for the updates. Thank you, Carrie Onwood, for the uh, updates as well. Awesome, so we will um, we'll go into our today's panelists today. And um, apologize if uh, those of you on the call today, it looks like we got up to almost 120 people. So thank you for joining today. Uh, we, uh, it's a mishap with uh, promoting this webinar, but thanks for joining. We have, uh, we have panelists of four um, great experts today. They're experts in their own uh, field. And uh, we are going to uh, jump into uh, this panelist uh, part of the webinar. And each panelist is going to speak for about 10 minutes or so and uh, talk about their existing industry, what's going on, what's working, what's not working, some highlights, maybe some updates, um, and uh, maybe some cool things that, are, um, that they're getting ready to promote or teach or um, have you learned from. So we're gonna go ahead and start with uh, Shane Barker, and he is our e-commerce specialist. So Shane, take it away. Awesome, cool, thank you, Scott. 
Um, it's actually nice to get the updates about the idle and the PPP. It's nice to know that California um, got a good chunk of the billions of dollars that's coming out. And so always the next question is, is if you've received those funds, what do I do with the funds, right? And obviously uh, marketing and e-commerce is really what I specialize in. Um, I, let me give you a little background on myself. I actually am an instructor at, at um, UCLA. I teach a personal branding, how to be an influencer course, but my daytime job is I'm a consultant. I've been in the consulting space when it comes to digital marketing for probably 25 years, or at least until it was called digital marketing. So I've been around doing uh, websites, doing SEO, helping people with social media, helping people with driving traffic, converting traffic, um, everything like that online. So really my role here um, for the NorCal SBDC is e-commerce based. And so what that means is anytime you have a product or a service that you want to bring online. So if you are a typical brick and mortar type business um, and you're in a situation where you're trying to figure out, hey, COVID has really affected my business. Obviously that's why we have the idle and the PPP loans to help assist you in that. Then I would be the person that you would reach out to in regards to finding out um, about if we can help you in regards to the digital space or also for e-commerce. Um, I will tell you that um, a lot of the clients that I'm currently working with through the SBDC, we've seen some good changes, um, good things that are happening. You know, obviously the COVID situation is, you know, in California, it's week to week on, on how we're handling the situations, whether places are opening or they're closing. Um, I will tell you that no matter what uh, the governor says, it's, it's an important situation where you just assume that your place is not going to open up and you have to look at digital marketing and e-commerce as a option that you really need to take seriously. Um, I would not wait for, once again, I would not wait for other things to happen. I would say, hey, if you're in a situation you feel like, hey, we should, you know, looking for another revenue stream and you're not sure about the brick and mortar and how that's going to go because it's turned on one day and it's turned off the next day because of, you know, COVID numbers, I would look at that and say, what do we need to do to transfer online and what do we need to do there? Um, I have clients that are anywhere from, I have a number of restaurant clients. I have a number of um, clients that were once again strictly brick and mortar that have no idea about digital marketing, not sure where to start. The goal of this is um, obviously done through the SBA and the funding and SBDC, you know, it's free. You guys can reach out to any one of us as consultants and there's no cost to you. So I think it's important that, you know, once again, there's no reason to wait one week, one month, two months, five months. Uh, really, the, the, the goal is to start now and to start getting using this free consulting that once again is your tax dollars at work so that you can come and, and get free consulting and so we can help to get you guys get a plan in place. Um, one of the updates I will tell you once again, as a lot of these clients that I work with um, have seen, you know, some of them were doing festivals. I have restaurants. I have a, a wide gamut of different um, companies that I work with. We're looking at different ways that companies can pivot, right? So assuming once again, the brick and mortar is going to be not going to be the same um, in the, for the next year or two. And then how can we pivot online and how do we build that same type of either community or that same type of experience that somebody had at a brick and mortar location offline. Um, and there's a lot of interesting way and creative ways that you can do that. Another upside to it is when you have a brick and mortar location, you're obviously stuck to kind of the geographical location, whether that be, you know, 30 or 40 miles from there. When you go online, obviously the whole world is there, right? We have um, also the access of international marketing and, and international sales. There's a lot of different things. And so you guys are here today, obviously to, to, to know more about those types of resources. And we're excited to be able to offer that to you guys. Um, so I don't know if there's gonna be any questions. I know that Sunita is looking at the questions. If you guys have any questions in regards to me, um, once again, we specialize in digital marketing. That's anything online, um, driving traffic, converting, traffic, um, analytics, and then e-commerce being the big thing of, hey, if you have a product or a service that you want to bring online um, and how you can generate sales over the next few months and have another revenue stream. Awesome. Thank you very much, Shane. Appreciate it. Um, thanks for your um, quick dialogue and um, thank you very much. Hopefully you get lots of questions. All right. So uh, we have, uh, now we have uh, Mike Ballstad. He's going to, uh, he's our uh, resilience, continuity, uh, disaster um, preparedness type guy, mostly around um, financials and uh, succession planning. So I'll throw it over to uh, Mike Ballstad. Uh, hello, everybody. Glad you're able to be here today and, and glad we were able to get a group of us together to provide a lot of answers to the questions and the, the challenges that you're facing. As Scott mentioned, uh, normally people see me around talking about exit and succession planning, which really is about helping business owners to uh, implement strategies to position their, be their businesses so that they can eventually get the type of exit they want, whether it's transitioning to family, maybe a management buyout, could be a third party sale or a sale to employees. 
And right now, <clears throat> we found that a lot of people are having concerns about that being a priority when you're just trying to survive. Well, the fact of the matter is that building value in your business is really about demonstrating that your business is resilient, that your business can survive different things that are happening in the marketplace, and that your business as something to buy is less risky than starting from scratch. So while you may not be directly thinking about an exit right now, um, the very things and very priorities that you would be taking to build that value in your business is what's gonna help you to be um, more able to survive now. One of the things that we talk about is cash reserves. And many of you on the call may have, you know, greatly depleted your reserves and, and, and you're having to take on, you know, some of the emergency debt. And, and unfortunately, um, a number of businesses haven't survived this. And, you know, and it's, it's really tragic to see. So what we hope is that we can be a resource here um, to, to help, help you work through those things. Um, one of the things that I'm going to include in the chat box, I'm going to put it in right now, is I have, well, I'll back up a little bit. When you're looking at building cash reserves, much like your personal budget, you would look at three to six months is typically what you would have as cash on hand, three to six months of your ordinary expenses. And you base that on what your typical cash burn is. It's, you know, what are your bills and expenses on any given month, and then your projected revenues. Well, right now, most of us have seen their bus our businesses just, just stop working altogether. And so there really is no income, it's all outgo. So one of the things I'm gonna include in um, the chat here is a link to a calc, actually, I don't think I'm able to do that, Scott. Um, let's see here. Oh, here we go. You can do it, uh, Alan can help you with, sorry. Actually, I've, you know what I've got here, I can put it all panelists. And this is a cash burn calculator. And basically what this, and this is, um, there's a, a link through my webpage that'll take you right to this on Institute of Advisors. And basically what this will enable you to do just on your own with your, your family, your partner, uh, maybe a key employee, it will allow you to input various variables that you have in your business. It could be payroll, it could be adjusting, um, you know, what you think you might spend on, you know, some ancillary expenses. It could be, what if we reduced our utilities usage by 10%? You can look at that and identify what the impacts of all those decisions are on your business in real time. And so you can very quickly, without having to go through your financial statements, just say, you know, what if this, what if that, and get immediate feedback. And again, that is a, that is a complimentary resource that you guys have access to right now. And so <clears throat> the next piece of that would be that going forward from there, um, one of the things that I'm most helping people with right now is to kind of look at their financials and, and look at those things that you can do to affect your financial ratios, which really is a measure of your liquidity. You know, and I can't drive this point home enough. There was a recently a JP Morgan Chase study that said that the median number of days of liquidity that businesses have in the US is 27 days and that 25% of businesses had a week or less of reserves on hand, or rather two weeks or less. So a quarter of businesses have less than two weeks of, of cash on hand. So really, I, I want to make sure that you guys know that you can reach out and we can sit down and kind of dig into things and see if there are ways we can you know, reprioritize your financials and some of your expenses. Look maybe for some capital that's available out there you can have access to that might make this time a little more tenable for you. And then when you, you know, correlate, correlate that with what Shane's doing that can help you look at, you know, pivoting with some choices you might have in your business on different areas uh, of revenue that you could derive from online marketing. You know, hopefully we can just give you a, you know, a good set of strengths to help you through this time. Awesome. Oh, sorry. sorry. No worries. Thanks, Mike. I have a question for you already. So I thought I'd just go ahead and, uh, Put it out there. It says uh, from Susan, Mike, does SBDC have referral for business brokers? Planning on the North Coast, a very attractive case to move, i.e. fires, less COVID. Um, and as 
reaching retirement age, looking to pass the torch with a successful business. Love the webinar you did for us here on up at the uh, North Coast SBDC. Well, if you're able to capture their contact information, the answer generally is, is yes. Um, there are, you know, I know of a few brokers that do business up on the North Coast. In fact, we did help a business um, up in that general direction um, just toward the end of the first quarter of this year. Um, so would love to uh, hear about your circumstance um, and see how we can best align some resources for you. Perfect. And Susan, you can give us a call at 833-ASK-SBDC. Let me see if there's another one here. Okay, I think that's it for Mike. I think the next one's for Linda, but we'll her, let her present first, and then I'll ask her these questions. And she may go over them. Hi there, everyone. Um, I'm glad to join you. This is my first time being on a panel with SBDC. I'm a fairly new uh, contractor with SBDC. I've only been with you since June, um, but I've had uh, some great uh, consulting calls with clients so far. Not that many. And what comes up in the human resources part of COVID specifically is there a, seems to be a misunderstanding for a lot of folks as to why they can't hire independent contractors rather than employees, W-2 employees for their PPP. So that's sort of a, um, I think it's just sort of an educational opportunity. Uh, a lot of people just don't understand what's the difference. Why can't I hire an independent contractor? I only have part-time work or I only have a project. So that becomes part of the conversation. Um, as far as other COVID-related issues that have come up, not actually that many. Um, a lot of the clients I've talked to have issues or questions that are not specific to COVID, but those that are seem to have focused on leaves of absence. Uh, leaves of absence are one of the most difficult areas of human resources. There are so many different types, uh, both federal and state, and then companies throw in their own policies for leaves. That becomes really confusing when people are trying to go through the uh, FICRA, or Family First Coronavirus Relief Act, and the uh, expanded uh, Family Medical Leave Act. It's hard enough to understand FMLA, but when you add in the new contingent of, of COVID, it becomes all too confusing. Um, <clears throat> I've been in HR for about 25 years, actually over, well, gosh, it's getting up there, uh, about 26 years now. And um, I've worked in-house and as an external consultant since, uh, external consultant since 96. Um, let's see. What questions do we have? I'm gonna jump to Kathy Leader. Her question is, are you required to look for work if you have PUA, self-employed? She says, in my last certifying for benefits form, I had put down that I'm trying to restart my business, but there is no place to state that on the form. Where they ask who you applied to for work, I put myself. Then they sent me a form to verify that I'm employing myself. Kathy, this is not unusual. Um, the EDD forms and the online benefit certification process does not have room for many of the questions that are coming up because they've never had these questions in the past. PUA didn't exist, so they didn't create a whole brand new set of forms. They created some new ones, but not the ones that are specific to people who are self-employed. So yes, the EDD actually expects that you're looking for work other than yourself. I get it that you're self-employed. I get it that probably your business is, is um, not doing what it used to do, which is why you applied for PUA. However, the EDD is expecting you to look for work outside of your own business. In on the screen that asks you to list where you've looked for work, you are allowed to leave it completely blank. Go to the bottom right-hand side and just click Submit. If they want verification that you have applied to businesses, they will send you more information. They'll send you another notice. The form that they sent to you that says that you should verify that you're employing yourself, go ahead and fill out that form and then you can actually attach a letter to it. 
If you attach a letter to it, it must have your social security number, your name, address, phone number on it, on the letter, as well as the form. If they sent you an online form, you can actually send information and letters to the EDD, click the box that says contact us, and there's um, a phone number there. There's also an online uh, questionnaire. That's it for Kathy. Any questions? Did I clarify that for you, Kathy? Thank you so much, Linda, for answering that. Sure. That's it for questions right now for Linda. Um, there is one for Shane. If Shane is ready. Um, I am. Oh, awesome. I can read it or you want to read it either way. Was it for Bill? Yes. I literally just sent him the answer. So I just clicked enter. Okay. So yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So we should be good there. Do you want me to go ahead and say it? So what I was recommending on that is that usually it's five or 7% of um, which should go towards your marketing budget in regards to what a cost uh, per acquisition per client is that really depends on your product or service and I'd have to better understand exactly what you're selling online and what kind of a restaurant you are and we can better look at those numbers but I gave my email the advisor at Shane Barker if he wants to email me directly thank you Shane yeah awesome well thank you very much thanks Shane thank you uh, Mike and thank you very much Linda um, it's good to get some uh, questions um, in the queue and coming kind of as we go through this. And um, awesome. So now we'll get to uh, Louise Dawson. She is our restaurant program manager. Um, and what that means is she has a team of restaurant experts um, like on her team underneath her that are um, experts throughout uh, restaurants and food industries throughout all of Northern California, our 36 counties. And uh, she has some updates for you. So, Louise Dawson. Louise, you're muted. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Welcome, um, everyone. Thanks for joining us. And thank you, Scott, for inviting me. Um, yeah, that's me. I'm the restaurant program manager. Um, uh, we started the program about a year ago. Um, I have a great team that works with me with um, experience in various different areas, mobile food, artisan and cottage foods. We're uh, just finishing up our food truck incubator today. And um, so talented group of individuals. Okay, if you could forward that for me, thank you. So I want to give you a few updates. A lot of people have been asking us where the um, Restaurant Act is. Um, so the Restaurant Act of 2020 is basically an acronym for real economic support that acknowledges unique restaurant assistance needed to survive. Um, it's going through the Congress um, and the Senate right now, and it's got about half of the support that it requires. I think there's about a hundred and almost 200 um, that have uh, supported it. Um, so I think it needs a little bit over about 435 votes. Um, so the bill basically, basically acknowledges um, how the restaurant industry and its 11 million employees have been devastated by the coronavirus. Um, from farm workers to fishermen, truck drivers, restaurant workers, everybody contributes about a trillion dollars to um, the US economy and it supports tens of millions of families. Um, the introduction of this bill outlines how devastating it's been to the industry. Um, more than 70% of salaried employees have been um, let go and um, about 90% of hourly employees have been laid off. So it's been hard. The National Bureau of Economic Research predicts that only 15% of restaurants will be able to stay open if the pandemic lasts through December. So that is fairly grim. Um, <clears throat> so what it does is establishes a $120 billion uh, food grant program. 
um, for um, restaurants, drink establishments, and caterers uh, to stay open through 2020. Mm -hmm. And basically what it is, is the difference between revenue from 2019 and what they're expecting to now make this year. The money would cover payroll, benefits, mortgage, rent, utilities, supplies, including PPE, um, food, debt to suppliers, and other essentials. It would be for places that are not publicly traded or part of a big chain, 20 or more locations would not be able to, um, to be able to apply. It's specifically for those hardest hit businesses that bring in about 1.5 million or less every year. They'll actually get priority within the first two weeks of the program. Um, if you could forward it, please. Thanks. So, um, so we'll see. I mean, we'll see if this gets traction, I guess, in the next stimulus bill. We don't know where it's at right now. What is picking up momentum right now um, is the Restart Act. This was actually um, proposed back in May by a senator from Indiana and one from Colorado. So this is a bipartisan Republican and Democratic um, um, representative. Um, as a broader initiative um, to expand the PPP. Um, at the time they said it was, um, you know, they, they were declaring that it was uh, Senator uh, Young and, um, and Bennett were suggesting that the PPP was insufficient for small to mid-sized businesses hardest hit, but it's really growing traction right now. It looks like it has about uh, 47 senators supporting the bill. Um, and what it requires is probably, what is it, 60 um, in order to pass. So it's broader range. It's not restaurant specific, but it looks like it's probably going to go through, hopefully. Um, so the proposal creates longer term program for federally guaranteed low rate loans. Some of them would be forgivable. So terms up to seven years for businesses with up to 5,000 employees. PPP, on the other hand, originally provided two years uh, loans for businesses with up to 500 employees with forgiveness tied to quickly hiring back all of the workers. PPP loans after June 5th have a five-year life. Um, <clears throat> while PPP loans are forgivable for all recipients, if certain conditions are met, restart loans wouldn't be forgivable at all for publicly traded companies. Um, <clears throat> the Restart Act is um, targeted towards those hardest hit, so the amount of the loan um, would depend on the amount of revenue the recipient has lost. So keep your eye out of this. It could be part of the next stimulus package. Um, <clears throat> we'll see. We're definitely got fingers crossed because if restaurants and retail businesses don't get more help within the next couple of weeks, they're not going to last through December. A lot of them will not, only 15%. Um, <clears throat> if you could forward, please, the slide. Um, so then uh, uh, you can go ahead and move forward. Um, so contact your local SBDC or city and county to see if there are any local grants. I'm seeing a lot of local grants. Um, some of them are even being administered by the SBDC um, in, in some counties. So, um, you know, if you need access to a little bit more money, um, definitely reach out. They're, uh, they're available, okay? Um, if you could forward, please. So, uh, City of Sacramento opens the bid pro process for Great Plates Delivered. Um, it looks like originally this program was ex extended through September 9th, and now it looks like it may be extended even further. I've put a website on there where you can actually go and get more information off of the government site. But again, this is um, a program that is administered um, and, and funded 75% from FEMA. Um, it's 18.75% from the state, and then the city kicks in 6.25%. So restaurants could actually provide meal kits, 
delivery service, um, volunteer management, and they're looking for an advisor chef. So this is a great way to, um, you know, use another tool in your toolkit to try to um, stay in business, it, uh, providing the meals and then having them <clears throat> being paid for. Um, I, again, by, by these organizations. So we've been kind of promoting this ever since it first came out. And so, so if you're not in the city of Sacramento, make sure to reach out to your local government because your local city or local county will be the ones actually doing the proposals to partner with restaurants to, to, to um, provide these services to, um, to seniors, okay? If you could afford this, please. So again, just want to acknowledge the importance of really negotiating your lease with your, with your landlord. This is something that's not just a one question, one answer. I mean, as, as a broker myself, I know that sometimes in negotiating leases, it, it, it takes months and a lot of back and forth. Don't give up. Okay, you've got to keep the process going. We're seeing restaurants and businesses that are getting help from their landlords or the ones that are staying in business. You know, some of them don't have mortgages and they're being super generous. I have one client where they're not getting charged rent until COVID is over you know, and, and they're super fortunate. I've got the other spectrum where um, a client is um, telling the landlord that they can't make it past, you know, today, basically, and the landlord said, has already hired a high power attorney and has said, well, okay, well, I'm going to sue you. So that's the range, that and everything in between. So um, I, I don't understand how, how a landlord can, can really kind of get that aggressive towards a client right now. It, it, it doesn't seem to me like it makes a lot of sense, but um, some landlords are running scared too. You know, they have mortgages and they're going to lose their, um, their properties. So, um, just to give you some updates on the judicial, so the judicial, uh, when Governor, when Govern, Governor Gavin Newsom um, first um, announced the, um, the eviction moratorium, it was for residential. So there was, it, it, it did, did not cover commercial. And so the, the Judicial Council of California actually stepped in and said, you know what, we're just not going to be hearing anything to do with evictions or anything to do with this type of real estate. We're going to put a moratorium on it to protect a lot of those businesses. Um, well, that ends tomorrow. So um, they were actually sued. Um, uh, a lot of the um, uh, attorneys representing the landlords were saying they were overstepping their boundaries and actually creating law. Um, so um, it looks like that's going to open up unless Gavin Newsom steps in and, and tries to work out some kind of a situation. What I can tell you is I've given you a link here for an extensive list of local ordinances where they have um, bans in place and where what when they run through so you'll kind of have a little bit more of an understanding of, of what your rights are um, I've spoken to so so many attorneys I'm connected with just about every real estate attorney in the state of California as well as a lot of other brokers and and I ask the same question you know like if if a landlord does sue a tenant and the tenant has a long lease you know what's going to happen and the basic advice that they're telling us is look you know the judicial system is going to be clogged up for the next 4 to 5 years so it's going to be a very long and expensive process. Judges and juries are not going to want to hand down, you know, yes, you're responsible for your 10-year lease that you just signed, you know. The most they would probably be responsible for is anywhere between six months to a year. Um, so, um, you know, our, you know, recommendation is that you just really, really get in with your landlord and try to work out some sort of resolution. They understand. They're, they're asking their attorneys and their attorneys are telling them the same thing. But somewhere in that, there is a negotiation. I wouldn't want any of our small businesses to have the threat of a lawsuit hanging over their head. There are ways that you can negotiate an exit um, successfully. So again, you can reach out to Mike. If you're a restaurant, you can reach out to the restaurant program. We can help you through 
some of this um, and some of these questions that you might have. So if you could just forward once more for me, please. Um, so reach out to us. We've got trainings. Our Facebook page has all of our recorded trainings on there and any updates that we have. Um, uh, if you need help reconcepting, pivoting your business model, marketing and technology, we're here and we're available for you. So I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Luis. Um, and thank you very much to the panelists for joining today and, and uh, sharing what's yeah. up new in your industries. We have a couple Scott. more questions, Sunita. Scott, yes. Oh, Sunita, go ahead. Yeah, so Linda, we have a question for you. I, I see that you already tagged it. It's from Graham and Dottie. And it says, my wife and I were working 60 hours each trying to save our business, but I just had a couple, I just had a surgery. My recovery time is expected to be about six months. Can I apply for unemployment or question mark? And the answer, Graham, is dependent on whether or how you paid yourself. So did you pay yourself through, um, with, by paying regular federal and state mandatory payroll taxes? If you did, then you would not apply for unemployment. You would apply for a California state disability. It's on the same website. It's edd.ca.gov, G-O-V. Um, but you would not qualify for unemployment because for unemployment, you have to be willing and able to work every day. And if you have any type of illness or injury, you don't qualify for unemployment. Unfortunately, you wouldn't, if you didn't pay into state taxes and federal taxes and you tried to apply for the PUA, the same thing would be true. With the PUA, you have to actually be actively looking for work, even if you're going back to work for yourself. So um, I hope this answers your question. Go to edd.ca.gov and um, reg register first and then apply for state disability if you've paid into the system. Thank you so much, Linda. In regards to the grants, there are people asking how they can find out uh, what grants are available in their local area. We did say you can check with your local county and you can also check with your local SBDC. They should have that information for you. David Bocash has also put in um, the Q&A some information in regards to the San Francisco Bay Area Working Solutions. They maintain a small business uh, grant page and if, Alan, sorry, I can't copy and paste that into a chat, but I can- Working on it. I'm working on it. Thank you so much. So it's working solutions, one word, dot org. It's in the chat. Perfect, it's in the chat. So that'll be much easier for you to get that information. I don't know if it's for all areas or if it's just for the Bay Area. So I have not checked it yet, but that's some information for you to be able to get uh, additional grant info. Uh, how many weeks uh, do you have, do we have to use idle money? Uh, Ona is asking, Ona, there is no limitation to the time frame for idle funds like there is PPP. You only have a certain amount of time to use your PPP funds, which is a maximum of 24 weeks or until December 31st. But with idle, you do not have a, a time frame, so you can use it uh, as quick or as slow as you need to, to maintain your operating costs for your business. There are a lot of people thanking everybody. Uh, let's see here, Brian is saying, thank you so much for all this information, especially to Louise for what she has provided today. Let's see, Graham and Dottie. Will Governor Newsom consider relaxing property taxes for landlords? who are not receiving the rent payments? Which is a great question. I don't know what is being talked about, Louise. I don't know if you've heard anything. On yeah, the I think that was already in the one of the um, executive orders back in, I think it was May. Um, I'll have to go and see um, if, you know, right now what we're going back is seeing where, seeing when everything, um, you know, ends. And so I have a feeling that was through September, but I'll have to go back and check that. Okay, thank you. 
please put your questions. Perfect. Um, Steffi is saying, I heard there will be a new round of PPP and that will be available also to people who already received it. Any news about this? It's not as of yet. This has been in talks for about a month and until they come back from recess, it is not law yet. So yes, it's definitely something that's being talked about quite often and also uh, forgiveness, complete forgiveness of 150 and under for PPP loans. But there is nothing that has been approved yet or written in law, but as soon as that happens, we will let you know right away. Even if it's during a webinar, if we get the information, we will let you know right away. So please uh, keep to stay tuned to our Monday and Wednesday and all of our other webinars as well. They will also provide that information. Actually, I've got, uh, I've got an updated version of the slide with the webinars. So maybe uh, Scott, why don't I take over showing that? Um, and that's, uh, I'll share that screen. And while we're waiting for some more folks to, to, to give us their uh, questions, just uh, some, we've got a whole bunch of things uh, happening over the next uh, month. We've just released our September timetable. Uh, so, yeah, we, we've got a bunch of stuff in there. Um, you know, as Shane was, was saying, uh, there's a lot of things about helping people move their businesses online. So we've got, uh, mm -hmm. Shane himself is doing something at the, uh, uh, actually, his is doing in October. We've got a few other pieces like, which are specially or specializing, specializing on single issues. So uh, in a follow up to our uh, use of social media selling, we've got someone who's going to be talking about setting up your own Facebook shop. Uh, we've got uh, some someone working on SEO, uh, making sure that people can find you when they need to. Uh, but with that's, we're not just on on um, on the e-commerce side. We've also got uh, a repeat of the diversity inclusion in the workplace, uh, looking at the how to ensure that your workplace uh, attracts and uh, retains the right sort of staff across your group. Uh, that because the right employees bring in the right customers. Uh, we've got some stuff on taking control of your credit uh, during a pandemic. So how to manage your credit uh, and maybe do some repair on that. We've also got some, uh, a session, uh, Paul Barzo is redoing a session on how to manage and forecast cash flow. Uh, as, as you, there's a great session he did a while ago for us uh, where he gives you out a tool. We also provides a tool that you can use to uh, uh, project your cash flow on a, on a weekly or monthly basis. Uh, and for the next um, few weeks or few months or even up to a year. So you can get all of those uh, information on everything that we're doing at the regional level at SBDC events forward slash network calendar. And on that calendar, you can see not just the stuff that the region's doing, but all the stuff that all our 30 centers are doing. Because uh, most of them are doing webinars, uh, or most of them are doing a bunch of webinars. And of course, because if they're webinars, anybody can attend anything. Uh, so I'd encourage you to look at, look on look on that calendar uh, and see it, it, what's going on there because there are some fabulous events being run uh, by a restaurant program, by uh, the region, but also especially by uh, local uh, centres. Okay, uh, that's that's it from there. Uh, we haven't got any more questions. Do you want me to bring up the poll, Scott? Actually, um, I am going to end the session. I don't believe Scott that uh, he just had to step away for a second. We have another question from Graham and Dottie and then also from Bill. Let's go to Bill. Mike, uh, in light of this pandemic, would you revise your rule of thumb of three to six months on cash reserves to something higher to ensure the business survives along another long-term disaster like this pandemic? We, we are your suggestions on the strength of the balance sheet and specifically the debt to equity ratio at startup, which for many of our SVDC clients has been higher than commercial banks will approve. Right, so um, I think I missed a little bit of what you said at the end, but going back to the beginning of the question, you know, that's, as I was saying in the beginning, the, the conventional wisdom is three to six months, but as we enter into a time like this where you've got no revenue, <clears throat> You know that, that kind of goes out the window, and so so do honestly your financial forecasts that you would that you would base those those reserves on. So it's you know if anything for a lot of folks it's going to be a wake up call because you, you know a lot of people do run a little bit lean um, as evidenced by the study that I mentioned where 
people will err on the, the shorter side. You know, we're talking less than a month of reserves on hand. So I would absolutely increase that where possible. Um, I actually have uh, some exercises I can take folks through um, that um, set, I call it seven steps to better liquidity. Um, and this is something where, you know, we can step through some processes to, to find areas that you can free up um, cash flow in your business. Now, if you're a startup, you know, that presents other challenges because um, oftentimes you're spending before there, there's revenue coming in. So that, that cash burn cal calculator I mentioned, which there are, there are other um, variable or variations of that available in the marketplace, um, can help you kind of prioritize some of that as you're, as you're sitting down and maybe re reworking your, your, your slide deck um, if, you're, if you're still pursuing investment on, and reprioritizing how you would deploy that capital. I hope that helps. Thank you, Mike. There is one more question that we're gonna be able to get to since it is 11.30 and I wanna make sure I respect uh, all of the um, representatives here's time. So really quickly, Jennifer is asking, does anyone have a screenshot of the idle fires application? The application is on sba.gov. It would not, it's not the same idle one, but it is their regular one. So you would go to SBA and you would go to the fires application. We don't have screenshots of each page, but if you're with us from the very beginning, that is the application for disaster. So it is pretty user-friendly as well. If you need any additional assistance, Jennifer, just reach out to us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Everyone, thank you so much for your time. It was such a great webinar today. Um, so much information and we just thank you so much for being here. And we will do this again. So thank you. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Louise. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Scott, David, and Carrie, and Alan, as always. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, folks. Uh, see you Wednesday. Same bat channel, same bat time. All yes. right. Bye. Appreciate it. Thank you.